Today we're talking about the easiest ways to get your eBay account suspended or terminated. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk a little bit about Vero's. If you don't know what Vero's are, they are a way that corporations, businesses can have their items blocked from other people selling them. This is something that eBay has used for a very long time. Now, I don't see eBay doing this to inconvenient sellers. It's probably a legal thing that they had to do to stop counterfeit use and people illegally using names of businesses. Let's head over right now to eBay's Vero page. So here's Vero Rights Owner Program. I will have a link to this page down in the description box as well for anybody who would like to check it out themselves. I would honestly recommend anybody on eBay who sells multitude of items to check this page out. It lists all the companies and name brands that have their information and rights already declared with eBay. It goes into a lot of detail. It has information on why it's there, brands, trademarks, and the whole thing. It also lists things you can and can't do with many of the brands. One thing I see all the time, and probably the biggest thing I see, is people ripping off other images from different sites, such as brands in general, to sell a shoe, a book, or anything like that. Any photo you take has to be your own. Even even that is a Vero attempt right there. You could get Vero just for using someone else's photos. Now there's three key areas to this page. What happened to my listing, which they're going to go into details on why they removed things, things you have done that possibly could have caused that. A term, a name, or something in a title is enough to get your item Vero'd, as is the photos, as I said. So you've got to be very, very careful with this. There's many options. There's things you can fix. Unauthorized use of names, photos, images, or terminology is the leading factor that leads to Vero's. A Vero can be a counterfeit item as well. So if you're selling something that may be counterfeit, you can run aground with eBay. Now we have had two Vero's in all of the time we have been on eBay. Now the first one was selling a Chanel brand, or at least we assumed it was, pen and pencil set in 14 karat gold. Now it turns out those items were counterfeit at that time, had no clue there were many others up at that time. Had I looked a little farther into it, once I did dig in, I did realize that they were counterfeit, never were made by Chanel. That is one example. Now there's a list on here as well, and you can actually come up to the top and you can sort by participants in this. And it'll give you a long list of all the ones that are in here that submitted their data. Now another thing to consider, just because it's not on this list doesn't mean it's not in the program. Now our second Vero came from the Richard Pryor's estate over some 8x10 advertising photos that were licensed through, I believe, Columbia Pictures. Nothing to do with Richard Pryor's estate from anything I can see. They are not on this list. Now I'm not the only one. I've talked to several other people who have had issues with the Richard Pryor estate as well. It never was an issue in the past. All of a sudden it's become a huge issue and they're being banned even on Amazon as well we got dinged for the same items so you've got to be careful even if it's not on here usually if I'm listing something with an actor's name and it's from a movie I just list the movie or a last name so they can't say specifically I'm calling that person out those are safety factors I try to do that in many cases especially with certain items now the list lists all kinds of different products one thing also to consider, just because it's on this list doesn't mean you can't list specific items from those companies or a lot of their items from those companies. They list specific things in most of those that you can or can't do. Now, I've opened up just a few. If you click on one of the companies, and I clicked on 3M right here, it's going to give you some information. It's going to talk about the trademarks, copyrights, and other intellectual property that they cover in this. So you've got to be careful on what you do or what you say in some of your titles. One of the worst ones on this is the Velcro company. If you use the word Velcro to describe the attachments, you can get a Vero very quickly. Velcro is one of the top ones that does it. The word Velcro is a company name. It is not a technology. So if you read through the page that they have here, it goes into a lot of good detail on it, what it means, how it works, and the whole works as well in here. They've got one of the more detailed ones. Most of the ones I've looked through only have a few paragraphs or so, but this goes into very specific details. 
onesies is another one if you use the word onesie that is something that was trademarked or copyrighted by a specific company so that's another one that you have to worry about I'm sure most people out there have heard of one or two of these that they've known not to go with and not to list in the past there's more now right now than ever before this is more akin to the gating on say Amazon the only difference with this once there's a Vero on there there's no way to get permission it's hard to even reach out to these companies we did reach out to Richard Pryor's estate Chanel doesn't respond at all just to let you know so most of them as well will tell you right in here if your account shut down or you're suspended from eBay these companies aren't going to do a single thing to help you it even states that in here and I think this one states it as well too yeah, and it does state it right here. Velcro companies will not assist in the reinstatement of any auctions or eBay accounts that have been terminated by eBay following a legitimate claim by Velcro companies or its agents. It doesn't necessarily have to come from specifically a certain part of 3M. It could come from a legal department that has really nothing to do with 3M other than that they've hired them to handle things like this or something along that line. So I would honestly recommend reading over this and always double checking this list before you list certain items and make sure you're following to the T. If you have a question on listing something and you're not sure, call eBay, send them a, a message through uh, eBay for Business on Facebook or something and ask about that specific brand because it shows up on the Vero program. They may tell you just don't list anything from that. They may have more information you know, if you contact them on the specifics on this to begin with. This is a serious thing. People get shut down in Vero's every single day of the week, I would probably imagine. We've gotten a couple as well, and I'm extremely cautious. We've eliminated all sorts of brands just not to mess with them anymore. There is no way to get around this. There's no way for eBay to get around this because the folks on here who are part of this Vero program have rights to have their copyright protected. The other avenue, if eBay didn't do it this way, would be to go to court every single time someone has an issue or allow people to charge with violating the copyrights, the users on the system, meaning me, you, or anybody else who uses one of their products, those people could come legally after us. It's better for all parties, including us, just for them to block those items and to move on. If you sell on Amazon, you understand the gating process as well. You don't have permission to sell many items, so you just can't sell certain brands. I can sell Legos, but I can't sell Reeboks on Amazon. It just depends on how you've got it set up and, and you know what kind of business you're doing. If you're doing wholesale on Amazon, it's very easy to get in. Now, in the case with eBay here, I don't know how that would work because you would probably have to get wholesale through the company itself and have them acknowledge your account so you don't get a Vero on something. But I would honestly recommend everybody going in here and going over what's in here. There's a ton of information. There's a ton of companies listed in here. You will be surprised at some of the things that are in here. There's individual people who own like copyrights to certain things that have nothing to do with them specifically. There's businesses, there's doctor's offices, there's all sorts of businesses in here. I've went through dozens and dozens of these many times companies that I've personally dealt with and stuff so I wanted to see we do sell wholesale for some other companies so you can look into this aspect as well there isn't much of an appeals process either at all for any of this we tried to fight the Richard Pryor one it didn't go anywhere we have tried to fight the Chanel one it didn't go anywhere we didn't get suspended it was always a possibility though the Chanel one was 10 plus years ago Richard Pryor was a couple years ago and the type of claim Richard Pryor's estate claimed wasn't one that I could get charged for because again they weren't in the Vero program at the time basically it just ended my listing I was refunded for the fees but this is something a hundred percent serious Probably every week of the year, I get somebody telling me that they were Vero'd for something. Maybe it's even more than that. So it is something that happens quite often. People in some of my groups here have actually been suspended for three days, one for seven. I have one fighting a permanent suspension right this very second over a Vero, over something they hadn't a clue on. It wasn't an attempt to, you know, violate a law. 
even in some of the notes and notices from these companies in here state ignorance of the copyright or trademark that we own and your use of it does not negate a Vero. It doesn't matter if you didn't know that it was a violation or not. That is not a factor at all. Just like ignorance of the law is not an excuse to break a law. It is on your behalf that you should know the rules and regulations on whatever you do, whether it be a law or whether it be a copyright trademark or um, counterfeit issue with companies that uh, deal with eBay directly. If you're curious, look it up on here. There's businesses, there's banks. This list has grown to a massive amount. It used to fill just one little section of a page. And if you see, let me scroll through it here real quick. We'll start down at the bottom and I'll work my way up. You can just see how many have been added. I would say there's probably a couple added every single week. Maybe it's more than that. I have no clue. But this has grown to a monster size list. Again, this explains why so many people contact me or make posts of Vero's getting hit on their account, suspensions and things like that. I far see more people getting suspended over this type of issue than any other one, at least those that contact me over this. Now there is a frequently asked questions list at the bottom for sellers, and it goes into trademark infringements, what that could include. It talks about replicas and counterfeits, brand name misuse, like some items that I can sell, I can sell the items, but I can't use their name to advertise them which is really tough to advertise some items. Another thing that I see a lot of people do is they will use a brand name in a title, even though they're not selling that brand, just because they're similar or like items. You can't do that. That is misrepresenting your item as something it's not just by using that brand in the title. If your product is not of that brand, do not use that brand name anywhere in the listing. That is a surefire way to get a Vero, just FYI. That part is actually covered under the brand name misuse. You are misusing their brand to market something else of yours. Again, don't do that. Don't do it in any way, shape, or form. Logo misuse. If you use a logo to advertise, even if you have that product, you do not have permission to use their logo. You may be allowed to sell the product like a used pair of shoes, but you can't use the logo to advertise the item, especially if you've ripped it off from their site. Same thing with using their photos from one of their sites to sell a brand of their shoes or books or games or anything else. Don't use one of their stock images. Don't use somebody else's stock photos or stock images. That can get you dinged for violating eBay's rules in another area as well. I do get contacted once in a while about people getting in trouble for using other people's photos. Don't do it. You can take your own photo, it just takes a few extra moments, and it'll save you the aggravation or the possibility of losing your account over using someone else's photo. So, Now, other aspects. If you advertise that there's a warranty on the item, and technically there isn't, or it's a warranty that can't be transferred over, that's misrepresentation of their brand as well. So you got to be careful on that. Copyright infringement is something they could legally seek action with against you if they wished. If you did it over again or used another account to get it up again, definitely you could be in some trouble legally wise as well. Just because it's on the eBay platform doesn't mean that you would be exempt and it would be eBay they would be going after, especially if eBay's dinged you many times over that and you've just created new accounts and things along that line that is something that people do as well now it goes in image and text as well you can't just cut and paste from their site to use that information advertised for the items even if it's their items again you cannot do that that is copying off of theirs as well this goes into a lot of information it talks about overseas issues Europe Asia Australia New Zealand and other aspects of designs it has patent rights for European products um, parallel imports. Again, I would honestly recommend reading this as well. Now there is a great section in here you should read and it's titled How Can I Create Legally Compliant Listings? And it goes into some great details to describe what you should be doing to sell those items. Review the participants' profiles, which are the pages that we just showed you. Read those over and see if they state anything different on there. Use brand names appropriately. Don't use them in listings that don't belong, like using the name of one product and another listing's product as well, too. 
Make sure the statements in your listings are accurate. Don't make a statement about, say, a warranty that doesn't exist or can't be transferred over. Don't make a statement on production or material used. If you say something is leather in a shoe, it darn well better be leather in the real item as well. If you misrepresent something like that, that would be a Vero as well. There's many other things that people may not think is a Vero. And just because you thought it was leather or something along that line is misrepresenting their item and can get you shut down. That is a surefire way to get a Vero. I've talked to probably several hundred people who have received a Vero in the time frame I've been up on YouTube. So they're out there and it happens all the time. You knowing how to navigate ahead of time before you list it is always the best way. It's never good to find out about a Vero after the fact because again, you could be suspended even on the very first time. Now, if you're new and you haven't been on eBay for very long, less than a year, you're at higher risk to getting a suspension or even shut down, especially if it's in your first 30 or 60 days. You're basically under probation on eBay to some extent. And if you violate the rules when you first start off, you may not have a second chance. It's all spelled out for you on this page. Again, there is a link to this page down below. But that's what I have for you today. Well, there you are. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified whenever I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. What do we have here? It's Castle Grayskull. And it's mine. Not so fast, Beastman. He-Man! You can pit He-Man against Beastman playing for the power of Castle Grayskull. You have to put the castle together. Beastman's escaping. The throne, Dad. Dad, you saved the castle. Castle Grayskull from the Masters of the Universe collection. He-Man and Beastman each sold separately from Mattel.